Hello chess friends, we are back with another brilliant chess game by magician from Riga, Mikhail Dahl, the, seven, uh, the ninth world champion and uh, one of the greatest attacking chess players of all time. So, this game was played uh, between Tal and Rene Martinier in the Capablanca Memorial. It was played in Havana 1963. So, if you love attacking chess, if you love sacrificial games and um, Tal games, this is just a game perfectly tailored for you because Tal does a lot of sacrifices and a lot of attacking and it, he basically teaches us how to attack and what exactly to look for if you want to attack. So, without any further delay, let's get started. There we go. The first move. Tal starts with e4. As you know, Tal is a very, very flexible uh, player. He can start the game with d4, c4, or e4, whatever he likes. Basically, this is a way of surprising your opponent. So his opponent can't really prepare against him because he has such a wide range of repertoire. So his opponent played e5, the standard king spawn opening, knight of three, knight c6. And now what do you think will Tal play? The Italian or the Royal Lopez? Well, in this game, Tal played the Italian, uh, the, the, the Royal Lopez. Excuse me, uh, the Royal Lopez, it's also called the Spanish, attacking the knight. Now here, as you know, knight to f6 is the Berlin defense, very popular nowadays, uh, popularized by Kramnik. But in this game, we get to see the most popular move, which is still a6. Now, basically, this is the Morphe defense. The idea is you attack the bishop and you ask him a question. You want to capture, you want to go back. Capturing is basically the favorite of um, Robert James Fisher. And Fisher has won a lot of interesting games in there. But of course, in this game, Tal prefers to keep his pieces. You know, Tal always Tal is a very aggressive attacking pieces, uh, aggr aggressive attacking player. He does not exchange his pieces unnecessarily, specifically his bishops, without having a concrete reason. So he keeps his bishop on the board, bishop a4. This is the main line. Now d6, the Steiner's variation. We have c3. Basically, it comes with dual idea. The idea is sometimes you can, you know, if, if the bishop is attacked, let's say with b5, the bishop can come back to b3 or even to c2. In that case, it will be very safe. At the same time, the main idea of the pawn move to c3 is at the right moment, you're going to play pawn to d4, expand in the center and gain a lot of space. Black now, uh, Martner played bishop to d7, unpinning. Now we're going to go d4. So Tal immediately uh, grabbed the center. Knight g e7. Now, this is, although not a bad move, it, uh, it invites Tal to play in the following way. Basically, because of this move, you can see black's pieces are kind of cramped over here. They're stepping on each other's toe. And it's very difficult for black to develop his bishop and castle in a less amount of time. He take, he'll, he'll, he'll take few moves. And that's the reason Tal here played a very interesting move. Bishop to b3. And that in itself gives some sort of a hint. That what Tal is already thinking about. He's trying to think. He's trying to uh, attack the f7 pawn. And basically, if it works, he's going to go for it. Of course, his opponent was very alert and he knew about Tal's reputation. Uh, so, h6 was played in order to stop the knight from going to the g5 square. So, basically, even if you sacrifice the bishop, black takes care that uh, after king takes, there is no follow-up to the sacrifice. And that's why the g5 square is taken care of. But of course, this is a huge, huge weakness. In fact, the move h6 creates ton of weakness. It's like a, uh, it's like the medicine being worse than the disease itself. Uh, so the cure is worse than the disease itself. The problem with this move, of course, is that it creates a lot of weaknesses. You know, the pawn on h7 was actually protecting the g6 square. It was also supporting the pawn to go forward. But now that you have played h6, the problems are pretty exposed. Light squares of black now this all of these squares are weak because of the pawn to h6 move and tal realizes that and of course this is something that you can always learn from tal tal intuitively feels that there can be something so here he plays a very interesting move instead of castling like most of us would have simply castled or developed some other knight or piece but here he simply goes knight to h5 this is breaking the opening principle moving the same piece again but of course there is a purpose there is a reasoning behind this and if there is a reason, you can always obviously break the opening principles. The idea is white would very much like to get his queen to the h5 square and attack the vulnerable f7 square. You know, that is a target and grandmasters always look for attacking targets. They always look for weaknesses. So basically the knight on g6 can in that, in that case cover the g6 square. Also at the right moment, it can jump to f5. In the game, of course, it went to g6. As we will see, that was totally brilliant. And this is the this is the moment where, you know, because of Tal uh, threatening black 
black king atta- uh, uh, threatening to attack black king his opponent got panicked and it's it's because of his reputation that most of the time tal's opponent would get a uh, would get into a panic and make mistakes this is exactly that moment when his opponent started to see ghosts basically ghosts are uh, moves that moves and threat that do not really exist his opponent started to think of all kind of uh, attacks which do not really exist and made a huge mistake over here pushing the pawn to g5 creating a huge lot of weaknesses around the king and this is exactly a player like tal wants so like always go ahead pause the video and try to find the move how you are going to continue over here well in this game tal shows a little bit of patience and does not directly sacrifice the f7 pawn uh, f7 point but rather first brings in heavy pieces queen h5 now we are looking directly at the f7 point and that as you can see was already a weakness the moment uh, tal brought his bishop back to b3 he was already cooking some idea of attacking the f7 pawn and that now he's executing all right the f7 is a big threat in fact you can't really take my knight because of a direct checkmate i would actually capture with the bishop that is prettier and more humiliating but of course tal uh, tal's opponent in this uh, position realized that the threat is made over here so defended the position with rook at 7 but again that is a huge weakness loose pieces drop off in chess as the as goes the saying the rook on h7 is loose it doesn't have any kind of support and tal of course spots the weakness of this move quickly and finds the correct um, idea to exploit it so what would you play here as white of course the rook is hanging so bishop takes g5 is the exactly the move you're going to look for basically uh he cannot black cannot capture this because in that case we're going to capture and again you can't take my knight thanks to the mate over here that's pretty uh pretty much deadly threat so that's why the bishop cannot be touched black in the position rather went greedy you can see because of his stuff uh like because of his um cramped piece over here he can't really castle even on the queen side his queen is not really participating actively knight is pinned and the pawn on f7 is pinned the pawn on h6 is pinned this is a horrible position for him so here he tries to be very greedy and goes for e into d4 now this is not what is recommended you should not play like this if you are uh down if you if your if your attack opponent is attacking like a like this you should not play moves like this these are greedy moves tal of course does not really care about the pawn and directly goes for the move f4 it's a very strong move basically the pawn is going to look the pawn wants to go forward and it has an idea as we are going to look at so queen c8 played now we have f5 this is exactly where we wanted the pawn again for a reason d into c3 knight into c3 and knight to e5 now tal realizes well look at my opponent this knight on e5 has started to get activity and tal doesn't like when his opponent's pieces are active and rather here decides to go for bishop to g6 basically his idea is pretty simple he wants to exchange the active knight in that case black will not have any kind of active pieces you know this is a very good positional strategy when you are attacking try to trade your opponent's best pieces for your not very good pieces so knight to g8 played by opponent trying to get some sort of a development trying to get out his bishop over here or over here of course that's the idea but of course tal now gets what he wants you know throughout the game tal keeps getting what he wants bishop into e5 d into e5 and this is the moment where i'll uh, this is the moment you know why white wanted his pawn on the f5 square the reason was he was actually uh, planning to put his knight on the g6 square now this is the move that tal played absolutely phenomenal here comes the sacrifices here we go and tal basically keeps on sacrifices one after the other so can the knight be captured absolutely not in fact if you capture this simply queen takes and now the rook is attacked king is attacked black is going to lose a hell lot of material that cannot be played thanks to the bishop over here this position would be totally lost for white uh, for black of course so uh, this cannot be played in the game his opponent played bishop to d6 trying his best to hold on to the position but of course now tal goes forward and makes another sacrifice bishop takes f7 absolutely beautiful and absolutely brilliant in the game the king captured the now now you might ask why not capturing with the rook this looks very sensible it looks very logical why expose the king in fact if uh, his opponent would have played that then simply 
knight to h8 huge pressure on this rook there is no way to protect the rook in fact the game is uh near to lost over here so going back after the move bishop into f7 the threat is if the king moves let's say over here you can simply take another piece on the g8 square again the rook on h7 is kind of trapped if it goes to g7 basically we just move our rook back uh bishop back and capture the pawn on h6 again we are winning a huge lot of material over here so going back after the move bishop into f7 his only real option to survive is to take the bishop and hope that some sort of a uh, defense would work of course stal does not let that happen in this position he plays knight to d5 you know always getting more attackers in the game is very very essential attacking uh, with a one piece is cool but attacking with five pieces and six pieces and three pieces it's absolutely deadly basically it means that you have no chance against the player that's why tal always keeps bringing more and more attacker in the game knight on d5 does an excellent job of controlling both the e7 and the f6 square and at the right moment basically it's kind of a prophylaxis whenever the defensive knight goes to f6 in order to attack the white queen he will be able to exchange it now this is why tal is such a great player he doesn't always attack but also goes for prophylactic approach of course the threat is still to move the knight and give a discovered check so black now moves the king but here comes the idea tal plays a very cool move simply castling and now showing that the threat is of course to push forward with f6 and that will be very very dangerous so knight f6 played by black and this is the reason tal put his knight on d5 because right now we don't have to move our queen which is under attack but we can simply move our we can simply capture the knight and after king takes here comes another beautiful sacrifice by tal can you spot it basically it's knight into e5 this is a um, line clearance move or a square clearance i would say the idea is you want to go queen g6 uh queen g6 with a checkmate the king cannot capture here of course because of the move f6 and let's say something like here and then that would be a mate beautiful mate and of course you can't really take this pawn if you do then you're going to definitely regret of course uh, apart from the move queen g6 i would say even stronger is simply get your rook in and go for a direct checkmate there must be some sort of a checkmate over here i don't even have to calculate a lot there has to be checkmate with so many open lines black king is a toast so going back over here he has to uh, he played king to e8 a queen to e8 again capturing with the bishop is terrible because of same queen to g6 and now we just basically take the rook again wins a lot of black pieces so going back queen e8 was played in the game but now comes knight into d7 that's a check it's a deflection tactic if the queen captures then simply queen g6 is very strong if the rook captures which happened in the game then you can see the rook was defending that six pawn now you can go for first e5 pawn sacrifice again king cannot capture because of another attacker rook a to e1 and that will win the queen so that cannot happen so basically he captured back with the bishop but now comes queen to h6 check king f7 tal brings another attacker very typical of tal always gets more and more attacker makes sure that his attackers are more than the defending uh more the number of attacking pieces are more than the defending pieces something that you can learn from tal is get more and more pieces into the game and make sure that you attack uh your attack is successful and accurate so rook to d5 played by uh black again protecting the bishop also bringing uh there is a trap over here of course tal fell fall for the trap tal did fall for the trap but actually it was in his favor so queen f7 check king f6 and now he plays rook to e4 now this is exactly what black was wanting because the idea is the bishop can go to d4 give a check to the white king and then the rook on e4 will be hanging but black soon realized that that cannot be played first he played bishop d4 king simply went to h1 and tal's opponent although tal has fallen for what he considered as his trap tal's opponent resigned here because the rook cannot be captured queen g6 there is there are threats like rook e6 check and queen h6 check something like that hugely powerful but of course if he captures here let me just show you what happens in that case again we make use of the g6 square the king has only one square here and now f6 basically spells the end that's a check and a discovered attack on the black queen 
so you can see all the tal did go for this uh, kind of a uh, trap but the trap was actually favorable for tal himself and his opponent could not ca calculate it in advance and basically tal destroyed his opponent here here uh, after the move king h1 it was in this position that tal's opponent resigned what a fantastic game i, I specifically love the move knight to g6 over here making sure that uh, making sure that he's he, he has always more attacking pieces and again followed by bishop f7 another beautiful sack and the sacrifices just keep on going knight d5 came in and uh, there was another sacrifice something around here oh pardon me this was a pawn sacrifice before that there was this one just knight takes e5 giving up the knight so tal always brings uh you know what one thing you can learn from his game is each game you uh, each game you study you will always notice that he has more attacking pieces than his opponent has defensive pieces you can see there are more or less you can count as three defending pieces although they are not really working i would say white has more attacking pieces the the queen the knight the pawn on f5 obviously is strong attacking piece the rook on f1 is obviously a very strong attacking piece so tal always takes care that he has more attacking pieces than his opponent has defensive pieces that's the key secret of uh, that's the way tal plays his games hope you enjoyed this amazing chess attacking game amazing attacking game by tal uh, until next time see you guys